Good morning, class. This is Mrs. Uze, your English teacher. Senior one, English. Our topic today is sentence. Everybody say it with me. Sentence. What is a sentence? A sentence can be described as the joining of one or two words together to express our ideas or feelings or thoughts. Again, I said a sentence can be described as the joining of one or two words together to express our feelings or ideas. When you have something to say, you have to make a combination of two or more words. That is, you make them come together to form a statement. Alternatively, a sentence can be defined as a group of words that makes a complete sense of thoughts. Not here. I said complete sense of thoughts. What do I mean by that? A sentence is not just an utterance. Without a complete thought, there is no sentence. You don't just talk without making many. When it makes a complete sentence, that means it gives meaning. It has sense. Take for instance, I cannot just say, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. You will probably ask me what happened to Tommy. It doesn't make sense like that. You must make it in a complete sentence. John just got talk. You make it to deliver your ideas or your feelings. So if I just say, Tommy has a dog, that one is well defined. That is, it has many. That is just the definition of sentence. The a sentence can be of three things, of forms. It can do one of these three things. A sentence can either be a statement in form of questions or in form of order. In form of order, which is command. Which is what? Command. Statement. For example, Tommy has a car. That is a statement. Where are you going? There, a sentence is telling us about a question. It's asking where somebody is going. Shut the door. It's an order. It's wanting somebody to close the door. So, a sentence is making a, a command. That is the three forms a sentence can take. However, a statement can be turned into question or vice versa. Hello? Vice versa. That is, it can also be turned. Questions can also be turned into statements. Question can be what? Can be turned into statement. That is, in reverse order. If it comes in questions form, it can also come in statement form. Let's see from here, the example here. They can speak French. This is statement form. If you want to turn it to question, it will be, can they speak French? And it will take a question mark. Note that a statement always ends with a full stop. And the question 
always ends with question mark. Can you all see it? Number two, you have had your lesson. There should be a full stop here. That is a statement. In question four, it will not be a, you have your lesson, which will be question mark. Another one. Is that Mary's love? That is a statement which we heard. Which we heard with a full stop. Is that Mary's love? That's a question. That is Mary's love. Is a statement which we heard with a full stop. Command. I want to emphasize on, the, on this command, how it can be written. Basically, there are different forms in which you can write your commands. Let's see, let's take some of these examples. Number one, put out the lights. A command. It should be noted that a command always ends with a full stop or exclamatory marks. Do you know what an exclamatory mark is? Exclamatory. Exclamatory marks. It is denoted with this. When you express a surprise or sudden emotion of someone, you denote it with exclamatory marks. So a comma is always a with a full stop or an exclamatory mark. Check this out. Put on the light. This is giving an instruction. This is a command. And it will end with the exclamatory mark. Go away. It ends with exclamatory mark. Please close the door. It can be written like this, or close the door, comma, then please. You have to take note of where the comma is in you. Number three, come here, Mary. Full stop. Or it can be written as Mary. You mention the name of the person first. Come here. Let me just differentiate how you can put the comma on the command or order. In the first example and the second example here, it will be noted that the name of the person is not mentioned, right? Yeah, because probably the speaker knows that you know the recipient of the sentence. He knows that it is you that he is talking to. And for example, when a teacher is talking to a group of identifiable class or a known person, that is where we use this one. This place here is just a polite words in command. You cannot just give command without politeness. You have to be kind with your words, right? And it is of necessary. It is of not necessary to put please at times. But when you put it, it shows politeness in you. Where the name is mentioned in question three here, in the example three, come here, Mary. Yeah, here, the name is being mentioned here. Probably there are many audience listening to a speaker. And you have to identify the person speaking to. That's why the name is being mentioned. Immediately after come here, you 
put comma, then you mention Mary, which we end with full stop. And if Mary comes first, which is the name of the person, then you put comma, then you make your order. Is that taken? Then you end it with full stop. Is that taken? So let's quickly go to the type of sentence.
That is what we call interrogative sentence. It usually ends with a question mark. Hang with what? A question mark. Handy. Let's try. Ask the questions. The usual four. The usual form of interrogative.
of sentence. Plus 
of them. We're going to see an example from each. Then, how? How plus adjective or adverb plus adjective or adverb plus subject. Plus there. Let's see. E.G. What a liar he is. Two. How exciting. How exciting. The movie was. I can see Patrick there in the picture. So if you have no question, if you have a question, please use your hand. Or do it. And please tell me if I'm right now, so I'm saying. 
Your question is welcome. Remain blessed. 